You're listening to the Voices Behind Women's Cricket Chat. That's Hannah, Georgie, Cassie, Mahika and Alex. Coming up on today's podcast... Coming up on today's podcast, we've got Southern Vipers and Southern Brave all-rounder Ella McCocken. Now we talked to Ella about all things cricket, including her spin, as well as making it to, you know, four finals out of the past five domestically in England... You know, and what it's like to be coached by the legendary Charlotte Edwards. Just a note to say that this was recorded back in August, so before the Hey Ho Flint final and the outcome of that. So Ella, a question we like to sort of start off with is just simply, how did you get into cricket? Um, well, I'd say that because both my parents were originally, they were PE teachers, so I was always brought up with sport, like loads of different sports, not just cricket. Um, and quite an outdoorsy childhood so I'd say that probably helped me with my sport like hand eye and stuff and then um, my brother played went to his local club so I just went down it's quite like it's quite common for I feel like an older brother Um, and so I went down started playing I was the only girl and yeah I just really liked it and carried on so that's how I kind of got into it. Yeah, and what were the other sports that you you played except from cricket? And when did you decide that actually I just want to focus on cricket? Um, so I played football for Brighton from when I was eleven till I think fifteen, and that was like it was quite a big part of my life as well. Um, and I decided when at that point it was like before my GCSEs, and I thought I need to focus because I was t- it was taking up so much time. And that's when I decided, because I was better at cricket, I'd focus on that one. And that was what I really had the love for. So that's why I went down this path. Yeah, and, and talk to us a bit about sort of going from like club cricket and then to county cricket for Sussex. How did that come about? Was it like a, a trial day you went to or, or did someone put you forward? I'm still, I could still technically pay for them. Like it's still my local club. Uh, but I'd say I played, I played age group till under 18s, which I think really helped me because the boys, I feel like it's just a different game and, Help me. I just liked it when I went out as a bat. All the boys would kind of give me weird looks because I was a girl, but I liked proving them wrong when I went out. And um, I just think it was a good environment for me to be in. And yeah, so I, I played until I was 18, and then I think County and Vipers took over really. But if I wanted to, I could still play and I would enjoy it, I think. Yeah, you just touched there about playing with the boys and then them having certain reactions, like, oh, there's a girl on the team and stuff like that. And we've heard so many stories of that. And I think it's so great that, you know, you just let your bat do the talking. Yeah, it's normally, well, my team at Seaford are actually, they were really supportive of me. They were they were lovely. But then it was the other teams that when I went out to bat, they would all be like, oh, here we go. We can get this wicket really easily. And then I'd like, I'd like to go and prove them wrong. So, yeah, but my team actually was really good. It was a good culture there. And you made your debut, like your full sort of women's debut for Sussex at a really young age. How was that experience? And you touched upon sort of impact that, that players like Sarah Taylor had on that. So just describe what that moment was like and, and I guess how you felt going into it. I can't actually remember because I was 11, but I do, I do remember my first game. I think, I think probably my coach at my club put me forward and then I just started playing matches and stuff from there. And then I went up the age groups at Sussex. And yeah, it just went from there, really. I, I can't remember how I originally got into it, but I assume it was probably someone told me to go to the trials or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, it was quite, it was cool. I was, I was quite young. And when I played, I think there was a few internationals. We played, my first match, we played Surrey. And like, I was fielding against Nat Siver. And at the time I was like, wow, this is great. Um, and yeah, I just I just remember learning loads and asking loads of questions to all of them. And I, I think um, I probably quite annoyed George Rowless because we were playing Devon once and we were just sat wait I was sat waiting to bat. And I think she was probably in next and I was just badgering her about loads of I was just asking her loads of questions. But I was just intrigued and wanted to know as much as possible. But yeah, I really enjoyed it and definitely learnt loads from how they how they warmed up, how they went about the game and stuff. So yeah, it was it was really good for me. And growing up. Did you have any female role models or any cricketing role models at all? Yeah, um, I'd say one of my main sporting role models was Jessica Ennis. I think um, London 2012, I just basically idolised her and wanted to be a heptathlete because I, I don't know why, I just loved watching her and thought she was amazing, being so good at so many different events. Um, but then also in cricket, because I'm from Sussex, obviously Sarah Taylor was a big one. 
and I actually got to play with her at County which when I was that young was quite cool for me but I'd say yeah they're probably the two main ones and then I had other role models that aren't famous but like my football coaches and stuff like that when I was younger they were really influential as well and my parents <laughs> I have to say that <laughs> I don't have to say that but no, as in, as in, like, my dad used to throw balls at me for hours and I have, I can thank him a lot for that because he's probably the one that's got me this far, really. Just putting loads of time into me. Got to give the parents a shout out. <laughs> and you are still so young and you've played so much cricket. What's been sort of your career highlight to date? Um, I would say either winning the Rachel Hayho Flint Trophy in well both years but I'd say 2020 was more special because I got a few runs at the start and it was after Covid and everything and like we hadn't been playing cricket so but being back playing cricket at that in that year was amazing um and being with everyone so winning that was great and then also this year the winning the Charlotte Edwards Cup because she's our coach and it was just a special moment to hit the winning runs as well um yeah I'd say that was probably they're probably my two highlights yeah, I was going to touch upon that, actually, like you scoring the win and runs against Central Sparks in, in that competition. How did that feel? What were the celebrations like after the game? Yeah, it was so it was such a good moment. I remember everyone came on them and bundled me and it was, yeah, it was really nice. But I'd say that actually um, the bowlers did the hard work. So when I went out there, I could kind of just play my game and not really stress because they kept them down such a low total. But yeah, the moment was amazing. And then we obviously celebrated well afterwards, which was good. <laughs> And obviously you came quite close last season winning the Charlotte Edwards Cup, uh, narrowly losing to Northern Diamonds in the semis. Did that kind of spur you on to want to win it and not just win it, uh, go the whole campaign undefeated? Yeah, it definitely did. We, it, was, it wasn't a nice feeling losing that, especially as it's our coach's cup. Um, so we definitely we wanted to go, go hard this year and we worked really hard over the winter as a team and we just thought... Obviously, we weren't. We were expecting to do really well, but being undefeated was was a bonus, and and to win it like that was amazing. Yeah, and I think it shows us our hard work as a team, really. Yeah, and like we said, you're still really young, and you're obviously in a in one of the top sides, the Southern Vipers. So, are there any like specific goals or aims that you've got to yourself this year or this season that you want to try and achieve with the Southern Vipers? Um, we want to try and do the double, so we want to get the Rachel Hayho as well retain that because that winning both would be would be a main goal for us I'd say um and yeah just keep keep winning keep getting better as a team because also because of our internationals we've had quite a few go off to international duty so we've kind of tested the depth of our squad people coming in when they go off and I think we've shown what we can do because we've still won with teams like that so yeah I'd say just keep keep getting better and keep winning you are also one of two undefeated teams in the Rachel Hayho Flint. I believe it's you and uh, Northern Diamonds, both with four wins out of four. Like, how pleasing, like you were saying, to have that depth to then, you know, when Sunrisers bowl you out for two, 233, for you to then end up winning by 11 runs, you must feel pretty pleased with yourselves. Yeah, that was, it was tough at the start of that game. Um, but when we, Paige Schofield and Chloe Hill really got us up to that a good total and we knew like we went into the fielding really positive because we knew that we have a good bowling attack and we backed our bowlers and we were right to do so because we obviously well we won by 11 runs but yeah I think we're, we never we never feel like we've lost we always go in positively which helps us because yeah I think well I don't know what I'm trying to say <laughs> um yeah I'm lost I don't know what I'm trying to say sorry That's all right, no worries. And, and obviously we've spoken like quite a lot about your batting as well, but I know that you are a spinner. Is there anything in particular, like that side of the game that you've you've wanted to try and develop over this season and the coming seasons? Um, I've been working on it hard behind the scenes with the spinning coach at Vipers, but I haven't yet been able to transfer it onto the pitch. But I am like through the winter and in the nets, I still bowl. And I'd say, yeah, it's definitely something I want to try and develop to get an extra extra skill because at the moment I'd say yeah mainly a batter and fielder but if I can become a bowler as well that'll really help me in the future 
And um, have you picked the brains of your Vipers teammate, um, Charlie Dean, for any spin tips or even Tays and Gads? Because we know Gads is um, one one who's now becoming an all-rounder in the sense like that Lottie wants her to bowl more spin. So have you picked any of their brains? I haven't. I haven't really, but I'd say actually Nancy Harmon has helped me more because she's a leg spinner. So we kind of, when I bowl with her, she gives me a few tips, but just bowling with them in the nets, I see how hard they're working and that kind of spurs me on. So I haven't specifically asked them any questions, but just the environment where we train, I'd say that helped me improve as well. So. And there's a lot of sort of Southern Vipers players that are in the Southern Brave team in the 100. Just talk about that experience last year, obviously being around the squad and being in that environment. How was that competition? Yeah, it was amazing. It was good to be part of the first one. It was really exciting. Um, it was exciting because no one really knew what to expect. And, you know, the it, people were kind of talking it off before it even started. And then when it was such a big thing and so successful, yeah, it was amazing. And being around all the overseas and I feel like I learned loads from just training with that with that team because we were... We came second, but I felt, yeah, we were a really successful team. And yeah, I just, I felt like I kind of went back to when I was younger at Sussex and kept asking people questions. And yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, definitely. So it was a good experience, yeah. It must also be nice to have had Charlotte Edwards as your coach at Southern Braves as well, because you've got that familiarity and then you've got, the likes of Anya Shrubsoul, Smriti Mandana, Stefani Taylor. You've got all these internationals. Like, did you pick their brains on anything? Yeah, um, I'd say I just I just watched Smriti bat in the nets and just admired what she was doing, really, because she's she was amazing and in, in matches as well and how she prepared, stuff like that. Um, I just, yeah, I just like watching them. And then I, I feel like that picked up my game in the next because you have to if the level's better you have to pick up your game anyway so I thought like that happened and after the competition I could feel I could feel that I'd improved even though I didn't actually get on the pitch I'd say I definitely improved from that from the experience and what sort of part of the 100 are you most excited for this year obviously you're still with Southern Brave is there anything that you're particularly looking forward to um meeting the new overseas um Talia McGraw and Molly Strano that would be good and well, I'm excited that it's not. there's no restrictions this year either, so we should be able to have a bit more freedom. But also going to the big grounds and playing in front of big crowds again, that should be good. And, yeah, I'm just. it's just going to be such a good occasion, I can tell. I'm excited. And you touched there, playing at the big grounds. Um, you also got to play at the Home of Cricket Lords. What was that experience like for you? Or just to be at Lords, what was the experience like? Yeah. It was crazy uh, being in the dressing room. We got the home dressing room, so it was cool being in that. And also, I like I didn't realize how how noisy it is in the ground. You can hear everyone everyone talking, all the crowd, because the the crowd was massive. It was yeah, it was really cool. Um, the atmosphere was was good. And yeah, as the game went on, I felt like the crowds just kept coming in, kept coming in, and it was yeah, it was amazing. And how do you think competitions like the 100 can sort of inspire the next generation of, of cricketers? Well, it's it's because of the visibility of it. It's everywhere. Like when I'm watching YouTube, the, the advert comes up and every, it's, I feel like everyone's talking about it, even if they're not into cricket. Um, it's just, yeah, I think young people will be aware of it and because it's so exciting and and the structure of it, it will definitely inspire because... Even my dad's a primary school teacher now and his class, they all know about it, even though not all of them would be into cricket or their parents wouldn't be into cricket. It's because it's so visible that it would definitely inspire a new generation of, of cricketers. And how did you find having a content creator like Cassie in and amongst the team? Because it was obviously quite a new concept for the competition. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on it. It's just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Um. Yeah. It was. It was good. It was cool to kind of do different different things with the with the content creating and yeah. I don't know. It made it. It felt more professional because we had to like put out content to to the viewers and it made it seem like we had. Well, we did have fans, but it kind of made it more real that they actually wanted to 
see what we were doing and stuff like that. So yeah, it was really good. And you're at uni at the moment. So how are you finding sort of balancing uni work with cricket? Um, I think that my whole life I've had to, time management's had to be a strength for me because I used to, at school when I played football and cricket, every day after school I'd have, I don't know, two hours or more of training. So I've always had to be good at managing work and sport. Um, but I kind of, I just schedule my time and it is quite hard because doing law as well, it's quite a lot of reading and stuff like that. So managing that, first year I dealt with it quite well, but I feel like it will get harder the next two years. But I, I kind of, I know I can do it because I've done it in the past. So yeah, I just schedule my time really and put more emphasis onto things that matter more. Yeah, I feel like I did spend a bit too much time at the Aegeus this winter. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think I, I deal with it quite well. And you are one of the few cricketers, although it does seem to be a Southern Vipers theme for you guys not to go to Loughborough. Was there any thinking behind uh, being closer to home? Yeah, definitely. I, I, it, I kind of went not to home because I'm from Brighton, so it's not that far from home. But yeah, I wanted to be near the Aegeus, so I played. I'm literally ten minutes away, so. I can get there easily, get to training easily, which makes it a lot easier to study and like manage the study in the cricket. So I was definitely thinking behind that, yeah. And you were called up to England A to play South Africa. What did you learn from that experience and, and sort of describe that for us? I learned, well, it was the first longer format game I played with a Red Bull. Um, so I learned about all the tactics and how to, like patience when batting and yeah, like different fielding positions and stuff. I also learned not to be enthusiastic about being short leg because <laughs> that was a really big mistake because in the warm-up it seems really fun me and Scriff were just you know taking catches and it seemed really fun so we were really keen and then I was in there for about 50 overs <laughs> and it was horrible but it was a good experience <laughs> but just don't be enthusiastic about it because you'll be stuck in there <laughs> the whole game so yeah and how do you prepare for the Red Bull game? Because it is quite a scarce thing in the women's game. Like we get a test match here and there and like a few games for the England A. So how do you kind of prepare yourself, get your head in the right frame of mind to play the longer formats? Yeah, I think being more patient at the start of my innings was definitely a thing because the ball swings a bit more at the start. But other than that, I just try to be keep being positive and just play my game because I knew that if I if I actually committed to shots and stuff, that it's better than being you know tentative because it's going to swing more. So, and it, it worked in the second inning. The first innings wasn't very good for me, but in the second innings, I ended up getting some runs. So, yeah, it was good. And being around like play, batting with Eve Jones was good because she was she's obviously more used to it than me. So, yeah, I I learned to just be patient and play my game yeah it's not as good as it seems definitely and yeah was there any was there any difference because you might have played like red ball cricket when you played in the boys teams but I know certainly a lot of the the women's stuff is white ball so was there any difference like in terms of batting of like approach and, and if the ball did anything differently and, and do you have a preference with with formats do you prefer t20 50 over the 100 is there any in particular that you feel like is is kind of like your game I don't know. I'd say I enjoy all of them. I'd say most people would kind of classify me as 50 over, but I I think this season I've shown that also I'm I can play in T20s as well. Like I've shown that I'm I can come in in the middle order and and get runs and stuff like that. So I don't want to just be put in one category because I feel like there's that I can adapt my game to each each thing. Yeah. And with the women's game being a lot more visible now, like how pleasing is it also for you to see like your Southern Vipers teammates, Charlie Dean and Maya Boucher, sort of fly that Southern Vipers flag in the England team? It's so it's so nice. I think as a team also in Vipers, we've got this culture of everyone's happy for everyone when they do well. So it's just great to see them see them doing well. Um even, you know, Freya Kemp play, making a debut for England. Everyone was behind her and it was so cool to see her on telly in the Commonwealth Games. Um, yeah, so I think our culture makes it, well, everyone's happy for them and it's great to see them doing well. And it kind of shows the pathway as well. 
gives you kind of inspiration because they've done what we're doing now and they've got to the top so yeah it's really cool and just on that what are your sort of ambitions for the future um well obviously I do want to be a cricketer and now there's a you can be a professional now it's easier to be a professional now than it is in the past so yeah I want to be a contracted player and keep scoring runs become a main player at the Vipers really and then eventually I yeah I do want to break into the England stuff and be be an England player. And you talked about Freya Kemp making a debut for England against South Africa playing in the Commonwealth like did, would you ever want to play in the Commonwealth if the opportunity was given to you? Yeah definitely I'd love to yeah it's I imagine it's just cool now that we can be involved in such a big event it's 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 good, like getting, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully they'll get a medal, but getting a Commonwealth medal would be amazing. And yeah, I'd definitely like to be involved in the future. And have you spoken to any of the, the girls that are at the Commonwealth Games and have they said anything about how, like what the atmosphere is like? Like you said, it's part of like a massive event that's a lot bigger than just cricket. There's all these other sports that you can go and watch. So have any of them said about the experience and, and what it's like? Um, I've been talking to mainly Freya Kemp because I'm quite close to her at the Vipers. She just said that it's cool being in around in other sports. Like she said that they bumped into the beach volleyball players and I think basketball as well. So I think it's just cool being around all the other athletes and they, they can go and watch the hockey. They went to watch the hockey yesterday, I think. And yeah, I think the, the atmosphere is really good. She hasn't said much today. She's quite a closed book, but <laughs> from what I can gather, she's having fun and it looks good. And obviously women's sport now is on the rise with the Lionesses winning the Euros, England women making it to the final of the World Cup, back to back, doing well in the Commonwealth. What more do you think needs to be done to make sure that women's sport stays a prominent figure in the sporting calendar? I think just... It being on telly, that's that's a big thing because when it's there, people will watch it. Like I just, I was amazed. It was cool to see Wembley fill up at the football. It was amazing, and I don't know. We just need to keep, yeah, keep it on telly. Keep people watching it. Keep talking about it, and and it will stay being a really big thing. And the hundred hundred important for that as well because the women playing before the men, it gets people in watching it and exposing them to women's sport, which is great. Yeah, I think that's something that like in women's cricket that we really want to see is all those fans from the 100 coming down to like the Adidas Bowl when some Vipers are playing or Hove, wherever that might be, um, and kind of supporting. Have you Did you see any sort of difference with the crowds um, from the 100 and then going back into um, the Rachel Hayo Flint Trophy? Yeah, this season we've had, I think, two. We had the biggest crowd... It was something like a record crowd at the Aegeus for the for one of the T20 games. And then also, I think last week, it was a record crowd for the for Rachel Hayo Flint. So it's definitely getting bigger, yeah. And I think because people are being exposed to the women's game, they're realising that actually it's it's different to the men's game, but it's, it's really good. And if people realise that, then they'll keep coming to watch. And Because it's just another good sporting event to watch. If you like sport, then you're going to like watching it, so... Yeah, I definitely think the the crowds are getting bigger and the fan base is growing. Just also on you playing for the Southern Brave, I don't know how much contact you guys were allowed last year with the men's team, but did any of them offer you any advice or is that something you're looking forward to this year for the campaign? Yeah, we didn't get much contact last last time because of COVID, but I don't know. I think, well, I'd be up to talking to them about about their careers and stuff but I, I wouldn't say there's anyone in particular obviously the big overseas like Marcus Stoinis would be cool to talk to um but yeah I think I think just sitting after games and talking to them would be interesting hearing about their careers but yeah it's always good to talk to talk to different people about their paths and stuff and what's it like having Charlotte Edwards as a coach as Alex said you've got some vipers and some brave what's that like as obviously an England legend and as more of a, a batter yourself yeah it's really good she's created this this ethos at vipers of of hard work and i think it's essential like that's why we're so successful because everyone everyone has to work hard and we know that her standards are really high so we want to do well for her 
and that like the high standards have made it we have to compete for places and we know that she expects expects us to work hard for our place and we can't just rest on our laurels and expect that we're going to play everyone competes for a place um in the starting 11 and I think yeah that's that's helped us do really well and you can definitely see that because you yourself and Lauren Bell you've both been to four out of the last five uh, women's domestic finals so she's obviously doing something right to breed that talent and that youth and that enthusiasm coming through yeah yeah she she's she's a really positive coach to have and the way she goes about about her coaching is is really good and keeps us yeah keeps us working hard obviously you've got Danny Wyatt and Anya there now like what is it like to be in a team with Danny Wyatt not just at Vipers but at Southern Braith as well yeah it's really good um she obviously she picks up our game when she's there because she's obviously such a good player um and she helps us compete for places as well because when she's there you know that she's gonna get in the team straight away um she's really funny as well so she's good to have around the team and Anya as well she she's she's great as soon as she came that like she fit in straight away and she has high standards as well so her and Lottie together really lift us up as a group um yeah it's, it's cool to be around such prolific players yeah it's a good point because like you said Anya's come in as a bit of a like player co- coach kind of role so like how has it been to sort of I know she's more of a bowler but still sort of give you that advice having all that international experience yeah it's really good I can tell like when I'm batting she, even though she's a bowler she's bowled at some of the best bat- well the best batters in the world so whatever she says I'm like okay I take it on board and yeah she's really good to have around because her her cricket knowledge is obviously amazing so yeah it's good to ask her questions I don't know if you, you can't got any more questions if you wanted to do a bit of a what is it we end on I can't remember I haven't done this in a while <laughs> oh yeah so Ella to to end on we do like fun questions they're like they're not nothing too serious, nothing too complex. If you struggle, don't worry. When we when we interviewed Lottie, she struggled herself. So, you know, it's all good. Um, so one we like to start off with, and it's actually Hannah's favourite, although when she when when she finds out, she's always a bit like it makes you sound like a complete weirdo. But um she always likes to find out like what's your favourite sledge, either that you've said or that someone said to you. Okay, I'm not much of a sledger, so I don't actually know um, what someone said to me. That I that I don't I don't know because I I'm not a sledger, so I haven't said anything that bad. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it just gave me a notification, and now. No way. Is that? Yeah. No, it says it does say. Yep, supposed to be real. Oh my god! I hope it is. <laughs> is it not? <laughs> so this is this is Gen Z. <laughs> oh come on, you can't. You can't say... Oh, it is. Okay, you go first. <laughs> Thumbs up, Cassie. You're. <laughs> <It'd be real. laughs> nice. There we go. We can use that to promote the podcast. <laughs> Great, be real. Go on, Al. Sorry, say your thing, but. No worries. Um, another one of Hannah's favourite is what is your favourite tea item at a standard village cre- tea? And I'm talking food, not actual like items like spoons and blocks. <laughs> um, cold pizza. Okay, next one. Who is the DJ in Seven Vipers? My Bouchier. Every time. She never misses either. She's in charge of the music and no one else is. And and everyone respects it. <laughs> Who's got the worst fashion sense in the Vipers? Oh, um, Emily wins. <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, kiddo. But it is her. Who would you want to be stuck on a desert island with out of the Southern Vipers team? Probably Freya Kemp, because we get on quite well. And she's quite level-headed, so I think she wouldn't panic too much. Best place you've played um a GS bowl best player you've played with Smriti Mandana best player you've played against um who have I played against but 
Uh, oh, um, Marisan Cap, yeah. <laughs> um, what's your spice level at Nando's? 11 and a half. <laughs> don't, judge me. don't judge me. That is shameful. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> It could be worse. You could be a plane. If you had a plane, I would lose respect for you. Favourite genre of music? Either probably indie rock or, yeah, probably indie rock. And if you had to listen to one song before you went out to bat to get you pumped up, what would it be? Um, what's that song? It's called Move Your Feet by someone. Well, c- come on, everybody, let's move your feet, that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that one. I don't know why. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what it's called. I think it's called Don't... Is it Don't Stop the Beat? Is it called Don't Stop? What, by Basement Jacks? No, no, it's called... Move... Hang on, let me look it up. It's, we're going to... We're literally going to... Uh, oh, favourite um, holiday destination? Probably the Alps skiing. But I haven't been for a few years, but that would be my favourite. Would you say you're a good skier then, or...? Um, I'd say I'm okay. <laughs> probably a bit rusty, but if I get into it, then I'm okay. I think you could probably go skiing with Cass, because I feel like Cass is a good skier. I'm all right, I although I, I went in February and I got wiped out by this man. Like, literally, I was stopped. <laughs> I was stopped at the bottom of this slope, and he just came around and literally just took me out, like, fully. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was on the floor. And he came up to me and he was like, I know he couldn't speak English, he was speaking German to me. And I was like, I was like I'm fine, I'm alive. I'm okay. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we're allowed. I was going to say this. I'm not sure if um, yeah. <clears throat> if it's in like contracts. I think if you're potentially like a contracted player, I don't know if it would say like you're not allowed to do certain activities. But Yeah, I think it would. So I think I'll just have to live in the past and just... <laughs> when you retire... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When I retire, I'll go to England. Um, T twenty or the hundred? The hundred. Southern Brave or Southern Vipers? Southern Vipers. I'm all out of questions now. Last TV show you binged? Um, How I Met Your Mother, and I did binge that. I watched it really quickly. <laughs> and I think this will be the last one. But if you weren't a cricketer, what would you be? Not a lawyer. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> probably, hopefully an athlete of some kind. Maybe, maybe, oh, maybe a footballer. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Maybe. Just quickly, Ella, where can our listeners find you on social media if they want to see all your Gen Z stuff, which <laughs> I, I don't quite understand because I'm not quite a millennial, I'm not quite a Gen Z, but... Uh, yeah, where can the listeners find out about you and everything you're up to? Um, well, Instagram, probably the main one, just at Ella McCacken. And then I'm on TikTok as well. So if they wanna if they wanna check out, they can. <laughs> I'm not very I'm not very influential on it, but I do post. So is that taking inspiration from George Railway? Actually, I always, see, no. I always see her TikTok. So she started after me, but she's more famous than me, so obviously she gets more views. To be fair, definitely keep using it though. I feel like some some people have like you can just get so big quite quickly. Yeah, but it's not yeah. very crazy. So that might be why. Unfortunately for our TikTok, it just doesn't seem to um translate. Really? So, I mean, we might have to get you. We might have to get our Gen Z specialist Ella McCacken on the case. <laughs> yeah, but I don't post that much about cricket on it. Maybe I'll just start posting about. Massive thank you to Ella for coming on and being a guest on the pod it's really interesting to hear about her career so far and also that she chose a university closer to the Aegeus so she could spend more time training so I thought that was really cool if like me you're not quite Gen Z but you're not quite a millennial either don't feel too bad if you don't know what a b-real is because I'm still trying to rack my brains around that one but once again massive thank you to Ella for coming on and being a guest and to all our listeners if you want to keep up to date with everything that we're doing you can follow us on twitter at wcricketchat 
on Instagram at Women's Cricket Chat. And if you want to give us a like on Facebook, we are Women's Cricket Chat. If you'd like to give our personal Twitters a follow, then it's at Hannity1194, at Georgie Heath27, at Cassie Coombs98, at Mihika Varshney, and I'm at Alex J. This has been Women's Cricket Chat. Tune in next time.